Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to vlog 187. How to engage disciplinary literacy. There are lots of wonderful things about this vlog series that I adore. The first one is that you decide on topics and I see if I can answer them. So that's dynamic, that's exciting, that's brilliant. But every now and again, like this particular vlog, not only do I deliver on a request, but I can deliver on it at speed. So hello to Narelle. Narelle asked me to deliver a vlog on disciplinary literacy ooh, about a week ago and quite wonderfully because the literatures come together, the ideas come together and the persons come together, I've been able to create a vlog pretty quickly and deliver it to you at speed. And there are many reasons why I've been able to deliver this in a relatively agile way and that's because I've been interested in the phrase disciplinary literacy for about five years. I've done work in literacy theory and it's such an evocative, powerful area. But I've done work in disciplinary theory oh, for about 20 years. But about five years ago, the phrase disciplinary literacy started to emerge and bubble a bit. But at that time, the phrase was terribly exciting and interesting. Disciplinary literacy, oh, that sounds brilliant. So the phrase was interesting but the literature in and around it was pretty poor. So what occurred is I said to Narelle, look, in your thesis, and it's a SOTL, a Scholarship of Teaching and Learning thesis, and they're very hard to render a PhD, to be frank with you. SOTL as a method is challenging to create that spark of that original contribution to knowledge, particularly with regard to scope and scale, because SOTL theses tend to be small, and that's great and bespoke, but how we create that bigger engagement with the discipline, that's somewhat challenging. So I said to Narelle, okay, right, what if we explore disciplinary literacy as a theoretical frame for your research? So we worked through the literature and it appeared to be improving enormously and quickly. I went, oh, this is a thing that's exciting. And then Narelle went to a conference and she returned to that conference and said to me, Tara, disciplinary literacy is everywhere. So I thought therefore if di digital literacy and disciplinary literacy is everywhere, then uh, let's put it into the vlog series A. So this is a really exciting opportunity for me. So let's deliver some really edgy, interesting, provocative and international knowledge for you to help you understand where your research is going, but also perhaps where your teaching is going as well. So what is disciplinary literacy. It is a concept, but it's also a theory. And it confirms that every single discipline has a way of thinking, a way of knowing, a way of reading, and a way of writing. And that disciplinary literacy is distinct between different subject areas. So that means that different disciplines have particular ways of constructing, and reading texts and particular ways of writing about those texts. How provocative is this? So it's arguing that literacy is integral to content. So form and content have a relationship and indeed literacy always exists in a context and in this case the context is a discipline. So the argument is that disciplinary literacies develop within a discipline. Now that seems very straightforward and very clear, but how and why that happens, all oh, that's really intriguing. So this means that say in chemistry, in a chemistry class, or in an engineering class, or in a speech pathology class, the literacy that is deployed within those classes and within that research, that literacy is distinct. So students in chemistry understand, read and produce texts in a way that is different from an engineering student or a speech pathology student or a nursing student. And this confirms, I think, that students learn the deep ideas, the deep methods in a discipline by doing work within that discipline. So put another way, Disciplinary literacy is not only learning the content in a field, but the way of learning within a field. Okay, 
So reading and writing and thinking exist differently in different disciplines and emerge within the content or the subject education within that area. Brilliant. So this means whether we're talking about physics or we're talking about chemistry or we're talking about history or we're talking about nursing and midwifery. There is different literacy activated in each of these disciplines. Now this is provocative and this is controversial and I mean that in a really really good way. This makes us really think what is our literacy in our disciplines? How have we learnt it and how do we convey it to others? And how does that manifest in and through our research? It is suggesting that reading, writing, thinking in one discipline is different from another, and that's great. So chem is different from speech pathology. And I think we all really know that, but how it manifests, that's a wholly different area, I think. But let me just put the two problems with di disciplinary literacy right at the start of this conversation. Okay, so there are two great critiques of this phrase, this concept, and the theory. And the first is, well, a chemist and a nurse can communicate with each other because every language, like the English language, it shares stuff. It shares a grammar, it shares a punctuation, it shares vocabulary. So this means a chemist and a nurse can talk to each other. So we can go shopping, we understand the language, and we can communicate. So because we can communicate, yes, there's a disciplinary literacy, but there's all sorts of other literacies as well, right? So a chemist and a nurse can speak, perhaps not to the specialization that would be required within the discipline, but communication can take place. So literacy systems and structures are in operation that exist outside of disciplinary literacy. So that's important to recognize firstly. And of course, the second critique, I think, is the really biting and the really interesting one. And that is, okay, well, we're talking about disciplinary literacies at a time when interdisciplinarity, anti-disciplinarity, and post-disciplinarity have never been more important. So I'm recording this vlog pretty early in the morning, but can I say when I do my really early morning shift from 2 to 5 a.m. in the morning for my research, I don't even know where the disciplinary boundaries are anymore, to be frank with you. So if you're solving social problems, if you're engaging wicked problems, if you will, then it's not really a disciplinary expertise you're probably using. Could be, but it's a post-disciplinary literacy. So we need to recognise that in post-disciplinary times, maybe we need the understanding of disciplinary literacy. Maybe we also need post-disciplinary literacy. But further, if from your disciplinary literacy, so from your subject area, you wish to disseminate that research, you must recognise that your disciplinary literacy is probably not going to be shared with stakeholders, is not going to be shared by many of the audiences with your research. So you can have as many disciplinary literacy parameters as you like, but unless you understand the literacy of your audiences, then your research is not going to be disseminated or communicated. Right, so they're the big critiques of disciplinary literacy, and they are important ones, I think. And can I say the debate about disciplinary literacy shadows the debate we've all been having about information literacy in the last 20 years or so. So enormous high, enormous respect to all my friends around the world who work in information literacy. Big hello to all the wonderful librarians who have taught me so much, wow, in the last 30 years, let alone the last 20. But we all know, don't we, the debates that have happened in information literacy in the last 20 years. And there are two streams of this team and disciplinary literacy is starting to mimic or match the information literacy structure in the way those debates are organised. So in information literacy, there is an argument that a standalone information literacy course or intervention is valuable. And lots of qual and quant studies have shown that. So information literacy, that means undergraduate students, postgraduate students, citizens do a bespoke course that explores information literacy. So it talks about what is reading, what is referencing, how to do note taking, what is citation, what is refereeing. So often in the first year of an undergraduate degree, students must do in some systems an information literacy subject or course or MOOC. So that's a, a nice, brilliant intervention. Say, oh, look, all of us in all our disciplines, we have to do information literacy, right? So that's one way of teaching information literacy, how we find information. But the research also shows 
that information literacy is well taught when it's embedded in a particular subject. So if information literacy discussions are embedded in chemistry or in literature or in engineering or in media or in music, then information literacy skills within those disciplines are also well delivered, well taught and well understood with attention to say specific databases, specific literacies, specific citation practices. So you can see what's happening here. So information literacy, you can teach it in a sort of general way for all people and that has value and that is prov provocative and good. You also can teach it within a subject and that's also successful. Both ways work, in fact you need both. So disciplinary literacies in some ways is the same. So we can have literacy training that is standalone training on what is good and effective reading and writing and thinking and creating. Whether you're a chemist, whether you're a musician, let's talk about literacy, that's great. And then of course there is the secondary argument that disciplinary literacy matters. So teaching, reading and writing and thinking as it exists in physics or as it exists in history, that has value too. So much of this great debate, and how exciting is this by the way, is a sort of idea. That's why I was so excited when Narelle said, let's do this. Most of these debates about literacy have an origin in one great scholar's work, Jeff Barton. My respects, Jeff, you're a legend. We simply follow in your footsteps, good sir. But Barton argued that we've got a whole series of fundamental flaws happening in schools and universities in our understanding of literacy. Because literacy is being treated like a bolt on extra. So let's do the real stuff and then, oh look, let's do literacy over there, you know. And can I say, this? and of course then, then let's test it. Let's do literacy testing. Can I say also numeracy is taught in the same way. So, okay, we're now having a literacy moment and then we'll test it. Well, now we're now talking about numeracy and then we'll test it. So this is laying literacy and numeracy testing. So this is just completely incompetent, by the way. So actually, literacy works incredibly well and is effective when it's integrated into all subject areas okay and this is called in secondary schools literacy across the curriculum it's a thing literacy across the curriculum can i say it's treated pretty badly it's lacking credibility it's treated with a fair amount of disrespect so that's a great shame because literacy across the curriculum is a very effective strategy and whether it's used in art or mathematics or music it is an effective way of thinking about literacy and I would also argue numeracy too. Numeracy is very effectively configured throughout the curriculum but this model or strategy is lacking credibility and very rarely is executed in schools let alone universities. Now Shanahan and Shanahan are the great researchers in disciplinary literacy. Shanahan and Shanahan, I recommend their work to you since about their famous article in 2008 on. And how they did their research, and it was empirical research that has built the theory, is Shanahan and Shanahan talked with some chemists, respect. So they talked with chemists and tried to discover how chemists find out the key information. So how chemists read how they read and engage with their research, how they take notes, and how chemists write about their research. How brilliant is that? So they did the study with chemists. They also then did the study with historians. How do historians read? How do historians take notes? How do they then build that information into an argument, build into their research? So I know this seems really obvious stuff, like. How do you research? How do you read? How do you take notes? How do you write this stuff up? But really think about it. For all the wonderful chemists out there, hi guys th and gals, think about how you read. How does a chemist read? Now we've got chemists watching this. How do you read? How do you take notes from what you read? And how do you write that up into something original? So do you have a morphology? Do you have a vocabulary? Do you have a legitimate strategy to say, right, this is evidence from this particular source and this is how it moves forward into my scholarship? So this is the meta skill. Because I mean, you might be doing it, but explaining to other people how you do it, 
That's the challenge. And of course, that's the meta literacy, and that is disciplinary literacy within the subject domain. So I think this is incredibly valuable, isn't it? Because it creates profound transparency in teaching and learning. And I would also argue profound transparency in research. How do you read, write, and think as a biologist? This is not an accidental set of knowledges, but real, predictable, accountable, and transparent. You see, it's not experiential, you know, oh, and, and think about what goes wrong in teaching and learning in, in universities, and a lot goes wrong, because most academics have no teaching qualifications of any kind. So I always wonder, how do they know what they're doing? <laughs> how do they know they're successful? And let's just think about a biologist, right? So, so a biologist is teaching undergraduate students. Are they teaching how to read, write, and think? Are they presenting that meta-literacy, or are they simply assuming that, the way in which they're thinking is transported into the brains of students. So it's like, oh, look, I'll just provide an experiential thing. This is how I'm doing it. So therefore, you know, sort of pick it up on the way through rather than overtly talking about this is how a biologist reads. This is how a biologist takes notes. This is how a bi biologist writes up these results. So I'm incredibly interested in disciplinary literacy as a way of teaching and learning and talking about, for once, specialist literacies. Because we live in a time, and I have enormous respect for this, of generic competencies and graduate outcomes, graduate attributes, all that's great. But this is about what we as scholars, what a university degree does. These are general literacies, general skills. I would argue at this particular point in our culture, there are benefits in emphasizing the specialist knowledge, the specialist literacies, the difficult knowledge that may not be transferable. There is value, I think, in returning back to disciplines every now and again and saying, what are we doing here? What's the point? How do we read? How do we write? How do we think? Fantastic. So I also wanted to really recognize that the disciplinary literacy research literature and its role in research is also expanding enormously because disciplinary literacy is now being differentiated from content area literacy. So those terms are now separating content area literacy and disciplinary literacy. So content area literacy is focusing on the study skills that students learn on the way through through so inexperienced novice students learn some study skills on the way through an undergraduate degree that's content based but disciplinary literacy is emphasizing knowledge and expertise and it's the knowledge and the expertise that is possessed by those who are expert in that particular discipline or paradigm. So content literacy is about how the novice learns within the discipline. Disciplinary literacy is from the expert perspective, what are they doing and why disciplinary literacy. It evokes the tools that are used by experts in the discipline to create something new, to build the framework of the discipline. So you can actually see why we're here, why disciplinary literacy is an important phrase for us to think about in higher education and specifically higher degrees. Because if I put a, a new definition of a PhD in place, you as a PhD student have to gain mastery in disciplinary literacies because your original contribution to knowledge comes from your capacity to have that mastery of your discipline. You know what's happening in this field, you know what's happening in this discipline, not as a novice, but as an expert, because unless you're an expert in disciplinary literacies, how do you know what is original or new? So those of you also who love teaching, and I know we've got a lot of you out there, hi Ellen, and I love talking about teaching a lot. I know a lot of you are focusing on research and that's great, but for the teachers out there who you want to be an academic that teaches and researchers, you can see how disciplinary literacy could and probably will transform teaching and learning in higher education. So the idea is, oh right, we're developing disciplinary literacy. That transforms curriculum, that transforms assessment, that transforms just about everything.
So where we start, I think, in teaching and learning is we specify what literacies are unique to each academic discipline. So physical education literacies, hi to all my phys ed crew, you are wonderful. Physical education literacies, very, very different from civil engineering d disciplinary literacy and understanding and working through those differences. That's a productive scholarly enterprise. So these disciplinary literacies result in distinctive disciplinary practices in teaching and learning. And I think we know that, but actually being able to speak the words, specify the meta literacy that comes from that consciousness, that's tough work to do and provocative. So what I love, I think, is this discussion of disciplinary literacies is really overt. There's no assumption that the teacher or the supervisor can magically just transport knowledge. It's like I was often thinking about sort of the probably the worst Star Trek episode ever made, and you know I love Star Trek, but the worst episode ever made was in the original series and it was called Spock's Brain. And Spock's Brain is as bad as the title suggests it was. But they had this great moment where they were sort of transporting, you know, the transport beam me up, uh, transporting Spock's brain from one body to another. And sort of we assume that teaching and learning in universities is like that, that here's the teacher or the supervisor and we'll just transport the brain and good luck with that. But of course, the movement of ideas requires a theory about how those ideas move. And disciplinary literacy provides us with this theory. So this allows habits of mind to be created. But it's also recognising that our disciplines are specialist, and I love that, specialist reading, and yes, specialist writing. In a time of generic competencies, transferable skills, let alone anti-intellectualism, that has some value, I think. And I think we're starting to see disciplinary literacies as a phrase emerge from early childhood education right the way through to our doctoral programs. And this is a commitment as the Wisconsin Foundation for Disciplinary Literacy confirmed. They use this great phrase that what disciplinary literacy does is, quote, makes thinking visible. Makes thinking visible. Poof! My head just exploded. So, Narelle, what a thesis you are writing. Right woman, right time, right research. You're transforming our theories of subtle into disciplinary literacy. I wish you well, Narelle, and I wish you all love, light, and peace. Tea out.